It's not only news, it's science breakthroughs. Tomorrow's technologies. Advanced medical techniques. It's a glimpse into the future where we discuss artificial intelligence, earth and energy, enhanced humans, future society, health and medicine, space, robots and machines. Welcome to Science Bites with Joe and Craig. Today is Thursday, October 1st, 2020. It seems like we are seeing more drones flying around. These devices have become cheaper, so homeowners buy them for entertainment. Now you can even secure your home with a drone. Ring, the Amazon-owned security company known for its smart doorbells, just unveiled a tiny drone called the Always Home Cam that flies around and records inside your home. The $250 drone takes off, flies around on patrol, and lands in a charging dock. It's like a flying version of your robot vacuum. While the Ring drone's job is to record anything breaking and entering, it might raise issues for those who desire their privacy. Man, I really would rather a robot that dusts the furniture. Ugh. But anyway, the drone is designed to mind physical safety. Its software will automatically avoid obstacles like walls or pets, and its propeller is covered by a case to prevent it from slashing anything it passes. But the real questions raised by indoor surveillance drone are about privacy, like Joe said, not the hardware. Ring had a bad track record for privacy and cybersecurity. Since its launch widespread, horror stories emerged from hackers spying on families, even employees watching users' footage. But they should really test the drone in an area that has cats and dogs. I can really see this on YouTube videos. Yeah, <laughs> could see it already. Cats trying to swipe at it and dogs yeah. trying to eat it. <laughs> Imagine, or the cat goes to get it and the dog bites the yeah. cat's tail. <laughs> you should call Ring and mention it to them. I don't know. But it is a cute little drone when you look at it. I think one for outside would be better for me and for cleaning inside more appropriate. I could just see this now. You know, we have our friend Chevy with the cat. I could see that cat zipping out that little weed thing in the door, flying right through the screen, and poof. Yeah, I could see it too. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, Chevy, but anyway. Well, while we're still on drones, during the latest drone delivery trial, Walmart has started delivering an at-home COVID-19 test kits. The company started making deliveries of test kits in Las Vegas. Another trial will begin in an upstate New York town in early October. Customers will have to live at most one mile from the designated Super Walmart Center in either location to have their test kits delivered by drone. According to the press release, these kits will be delivered on your driveway, front sidewalk, or backyard at your home. All depends on where the cars and trees are. And where the cat's in the hot. Yeah, right. <laughs> the customer then has to swab their nose with one of the included swabs, seal it up, and send it back to Quest Diagnostics, the testing company Walmart partnered with. According to Quest, customers will receive the results in about two days. Some other good news. NASA and U.S. Space Force just formally teamed up on several objectives ranging from human space flight to planetary defense. A five-page Memorandum of Understanding signed by the two agencies draws on the long-standing collaboration between NASA and the Pentagon and reaffirms that the space agency and newly launched military branch will continue to work together in the years to come. The collaboration will heavily focus on the region of space around the orbit of the moon. Ironically, the document leaves the task of planetary defense up to NASA rather than the Space Force, which pertains more to spotting and responding to potentially dangerous asteroids more than any military operation. All in all, it's not surprising that Space Force and NASA reached a formal agreement to collaborate on future projects. NASA is involved with multiple branches of the military, and this new agreement is more useful as a framework for what those collaborations would actually look like. An example of this teamwork involves NASA and the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, which are launching a spacecraft to the far side of the moon so that they can look back into the very first days of the universe. As a side note, notice I said far side of the moon and not dark side. Well, you know, technically there is no dark side of the moon. Pink Floyd got it all wrong. Both sides of the moon experienced two weeks of sunlight and two weeks of night. This is true, but the far side does offer protection from earthly interference of radio chatter. That's why the spacecraft Dapper is going there to hunt for radio signals 
given off during the dark ages of the universe. This is an era 380,000 years after the Big Bang when there were no stars or galaxies to light up the universe. If it finds them, Dapper could give us a whole new level of understanding of how stars formed in the first place. It is still several years before Dapper is ready to launch. That makes it a perfect project to incorporate into Artemis program. If you missed our episode on Artemis, this is a NASA series of moon missions that plans to send humans to the moon in 2024. Okay, it's time to take a break. What makes a rainbow bend? Where does the universe end? To know the world from A to Z. Discover science and technology. Where is the dinosaur? What's on the ocean floor? To know the world from A to Z. the sun so warm? What makes a winter storm? And what's a quadruped? Why is the planet Mars red? You'll find there's lots to know. And exploring as you go. To know the world from A to Z. Discover science and A public service message from the National Science Foundation. Welcome back. The U.S. Air Force is working on new lasers designed to detonate landmines, bombs, and other hazards from a thousand feet away. I have a feeling lasers will be making a huge presence in the coming decade. This project is called the Recovery of Air Base Denied by Ordnance, or RADBO. If an airfield is blocked by mines or even just debris, the Air Force wants a way to clear it out without putting people at risk. The Air Force awarded a $40 million contract to Parsons, a military contract to develop this laser. The laser will be attached to a ground vehicle similar to a tank. Its main job is to clear hazards out of the current and future airfields for the Air Force to use them. The attached Zeus laser, I just love that name, will be able to fire 1,000 feet away from the vehicle and is powerful enough to detonate small submunitions from cluster bombs, landmines, general purpose bombs, and thick cased artillery rounds. The bomb clearing system isn't precisely announcing a new era of laser warfare, similar to the high energy weapons that the Pentagon has already been developing. However, it does show that lasers are becoming increasingly commonplace and useful in military settings, even if they're not being used directly as a weapon. We will actually see about that part. But what I'm really excited about tonight, Joe, is our next bit of science news. I love this one. Oh, yeah. Designers from the University of Technology in the Netherlands teamed up with the Natural History Museum to develop the Living Cocoon, a moss-filled living coffin made of special fungus. I know this may be a morbid topic for some people. Death is never an easy topic to discuss. But I've always been plagued by what will happen to my body when I die. I don't want to be embalmed and buried because it's terrible for the environment, yet I don't want to be cremated because I'm not giving anything back to the environment. What appeals to me is having Mother Nature reclaim my body to give back what I took from her in the first place. Well, this is the dark side. This one's for you, Craig. (laughs) It's not really dark, is it? (laughs) The coven significantly speeds up the time it takes for a human body, its clothing and other material buried, to decompose from a decade down to two years. That's really fast. Yep. That's in large part thanks to its construction material of mycelium. This fast-growing fungus-like bacteria colony that can grow into massive underground networks. Mycelium is also able to neutralize toxic substances and provide nutrition to anything growing nearby, meaning the soil will benefit from such a burial in the long term. The living cocoon enables people to become one with nature again and enrich the soil instead of polluting it. The researchers behind the living cocoon have already completed a funeral in which the deceased was buried in one, what they claim to be the world's first burial. The living cocoon echoes similar inventions such as the infinity burial suit dreamed up by a green burial company. It's essentially a death suit with mycelia spores infused in its crocheted netting. The Dutch company is now investigating the positive effects and increases 
of biodiversity as a result of burying this type of coffin. The company wants to know exactly what contribution this type of burial makes to the soil as this will help them convince local municipalities in the future to transform polluted areas into healthy woodland using our bodies as nutrients. I just love this idea. I think it will help the environment. You know, sometimes doing things at home or in your home state can have a positive impact on the climate. Take California, for instance. The governor recently signed an executive order that calls for a complete ban on the sale of any new gasoline-powered cars and light trucks in the state by 2035 to slash greenhouse gas emissions. Medium or heavy-duty trucks will also have to be at zero emissions by 2045. You know, Joe, we do possess the technology to make this happen. I see no reason why people shouldn't want it. Um, and it's going to open the doorway to a bunch of new jobs. Oh, yeah, I know. And that could go on as a long conversation. The governor said his order should help car makers drive down the cost of alternative fuel-powered vehicles versus combustion engine vehicles. I'm excited about the future of cars. Some of these electric cars are so cool looking. <laughs> yeah, remember the first electric one we had 15 yeah. years ago? Yeah, and Tesla said their um, more widespread commercial for everyday use should be coming out in a couple of years, I think starting at 24000 so you that's nice. You can see where all this is going. I mean, just, just look at a... At our houses, all the different camera systems, we've got solar powering them and everything else. I yeah. mean, we're coming a long way. We are. Okay, we're going to take a small break, and when we return, we have another bite for you. We're building the next chapter of American exploration, returning to the moon to stay, so we can go beyond to Mars to expand what's possible and further our understanding. The architecture for these missions is already taking shape. We will go with new systems, bold designs, and a sustainable mission. You can hear it, taste it, touch it. We are going. We are training, testing, pressing our pioneering spirit into every component, defining our resolve with every line of code, and securing our success with every welcomed partnership. This is not hypothetical. This is not about flags and footprints. This is about sustainable science and feeding forward the advance of the human spirit. Because we are the pioneers, the star sailors, the thinkers, the visionaries, the doers. And because we stand on the shoulders of giants to go farther than humanity has ever been. We will add our names to the roles of the greatest adventurers in history. Every day, every mission, we advance this call. We are NASA. And after 60 years, we're just getting started. Welcome back. A team of scientists spotted what they might think is the first known exoplanet in an entirely different galaxy. There could be billions of exoplanets within our own galaxy, but finding new worlds and even the next galaxy over is vastly more complicated. Now with evidence that a planet-sized object is orbiting a binary system in the Whirlpool galaxy, thanks to a team of Harvard Smithsonian scientists. Over the years, a few scientists found signs of exoplanets in other galaxies, but they still have not yet to be all confirmed. This find is still not 100% confirmed. That type of confirmation could be decades away. What the team found is evidence that an object the size of Saturn, potentially a gas planet itself, passed in front of one of the stars in the binary system. But because it's also orbiting about the same distance as Saturn does to our Sun, it might be decades before it does so again, at which point scientists could confirm the discovery. It's sure a long time to wait for a confirmation. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't have the patience to wait for something like that. Still, it's exciting just knowing our technology is improving so fast that we can see into the galaxy next door. That brings us to the close of another show. You can find all our shows on our website, MyScienceBites.com, and all other podcast platforms. Joe and I appreciate your continued support. Thanks again for listening, and we will be back next week with another new episode. Music